You just heard a spare through a charging mammoth. Instant complete meal. Now imagine downing a bright green kale smoothie that leaves your stomach in knots. Hey guys, welcome back to the Primal Shift podcast where ancestral wisdom meets modern science. I'm your host, Michael Kummer, healthy living enthusiast, crossfitter, and homesteader. You know, my family and I have been growing our own plants and raising animals for years, so I know firsthand what farm-to-table really takes. And after 30 years of struggling with IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, I fixed it through precise dietary changes. Now I'm a lifelong student of human nutrition, and I'm excited to share these insights with you. If you've ever heard red meat clogs your arteries and causes heart disease, one raw bean will wreck your gut, ale is a perfect superfood with zero downsides, or all animal fat is toxic, you're in good company. We'll tackle every one of those ideas today. No jargon, just plain facts and stories. So in the next 10 to 12 minutes, we'll cover why learning to hunt changed human diet forever and why it still matters, which hidden plant chemicals can actually harm you and how serious the effects can be, which simple kitchen tricks really make plant food safer and which don't, and whether meat truly beats plants for nutrition or if a balanced approach maybe wins. So stick around until the end. You'll learn the single healthiest foods on both sides of the fence. And if you're enjoying this so far, hit subscribe, ring the bell, and comment below. What do you think is the healthiest food on earth? Be specific, like kale, spinach, or maybe even liver. That helps us bring you more deep dives every single week. Let's start with animals. You know, animals have only two defenses. They fight or they flee. And over thousands of years, humans got really good at hunting, from spares to bows to chasing prey on foot for hours. Why? Because once the animal is down, everything you need, protein, fat, vitamins, minerals, was right there with no extra work. In fact, Greenland hunters who ate predominantly whale and seal have some of the healthiest hearts ever recorded, despite eating a high-fat diet. You know, that goes right in the face of fat clocks or animal fat clocks arteries and causes heart disease. And there's a reason for that, because game meat gives you all of the building blocks for muscles, meaning they have a complete proteins, complete amino acid profile. They have fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, and K in forms your body can use instantly without having to convert anything. They contain critical nutrients like B12, creatine, taurin, and healthy fats like omega-3s. And don't forget organ meats, the liver, heart, kidney. They're off the charts rich in absorbable and bioavailable micronutrients. A single serving can give you the daily dose of vitamin E and iron and everything in between that you would otherwise struggle to get. So the bottom line here really is that consuming animals, you know, you get a perfect ready-made meal with zero toxins to worry about. And here's a quick cheap plug for MK Supplements, a company my wife and I founded a couple of years ago. You know, we turn fresh organs from regeneratively raised cows and bison into tasteless gelatin capsules. And only four to five capsules a day provide you with all of the micronutrients you need to thrive. So check out mksubs.com and use code PRIMALSHIFT for 15% off your next purchase. Let's switch gears and talk about plants. You know, since plants can't run, they've evolved chemicals to stop animals, including us, from eating them. And these chemicals can affect your health in real ways. For example, lectins found in beans and grains, among others. Some of these proteins, lectins or proteins, stick to your gut walls, causing irritation, bloating, or long-term gut leaks. And lab animals fed raw lectins often end up with upset stomachs and inflammation. So it's been shown both in humans as well as in animal studies that lectins are terrible for our health. Number two is phytates. They are found in seeds and whole grains. And these bind important minerals like iron and zinc so your body cannot absorb them. And in one human study, people who soaked and fermented their whole grain a bread saw their iron absorption jump from nearly zero to almost a quarter of their meal's iron content. Now that's still not a whole lot, but it's significantly better of consuming those grains without soaking them and preparing them first. Number three, and there are maybe dozens, there are dozens of those anti-nutrients, but I'm gonna just cover the few important ones. Number three is goitrogens. They are found in broccoli and cauliflower and kale, among others. And these interfere with how your thyroid uses iodine. In low iodine areas, heavy consumption of raw cruciferous veggies have been linked to goiter, an enlarged thyroid gland. Not a good thing. So if you suffer from thyroid issues, I would highly recommend 
avoiding any plants that are rich in those goitrogens. Number four, and that's really one of the worst anti-nutrients, are oxalates. They are found in spinach, in Swiss chard, and rhubarb, and some other vegetables. And these form crystals with calcium, which can lead to painful kidney stones. And one large study actually found that people who ate spinach more than eight times a month had a one-third higher risk of developing those kidney stones. That's a significant risk. Now, here's the thing. You know, plants have different parts, obviously, and some of those parts are more protected by those chemicals than others. For example, the skins, peels, seeds, and leaves and stems are where those chemicals concentrate. So you have to either avoid those parts or learn how to mitigate them. But the bottom line here really is that plants aren't harmless. They come with hidden risks. But the good news is there are ways to prepare some plant foods so they are much safer or at least a little bit safer. And we'll talk about that next. Now, here's the thing, you know, harvesting plants is easy. You know, you just bend over, pick something up and, and you're done. Not quite because turning them into safe, nutritious foods takes a bit of an effort. So let me walk you through some of those little tricks that you can use to mitigate at least some of the issues in plant foods. Number one is soaking. You know, it takes about eight to 12 hours. We typically soak stuff overnight, like rice, for example. But when you do this, some of the, uh, the hard to digest bits um, are reduced and also the mineral blockers are reduced by up to 70%. So some of those anti-nutrients that bind minerals and or prevent the absorption from the minerals found in those, in those plants um, are significantly reduced. So we always soak rice overnight and we discard the water. You know, soaking beans is also a great idea. You don't want to eat beans that have not been soaked, you know, overnight for, or for at least 8 to 12 hours. And how do you know it's working? You're soaking, you know, just look at the water. If it turns cloudy, then rinse until it's clear and you're probably good to go. Number two is sprouting. That can take a couple of days, usually two to three days. And sprouting sparks natural enzymes inside the seed to break down some of those anti-nutrients. Fermenting is another great way to reduce some of the anti-nutrients in certain plants, especially seeds. That's typically a process that takes one to five days, depending on what you're trying to ferment. But what it does is you leverage friendly bacteria that eat up lectins and sugars. So for example, with sauerkraut, with kimchi, or even sourdough. I know my wife likes to bake sourdough uh, bread every so often. And fermenting, especially if you have long fermentation periods or double fermentation can really help to reduce the anti-nutrient load. Number four, fairly straightforward cooking, like boiling, steaming, pressure cooking, whatever. And that can also destroy many lectins and enzyme inhibitors. But here's the thing, not of, none of those mitigation techniques do anything with oxalates. There is no way known to man, or at least not known to me, to reduce oxalates. And even goitrogens are very difficult to mitigate. So it's much better to avoid foods that contain oxalates or goitrogens altogether, or only have them very sparingly so you don't overload your detoxification system and then deal with the consequences. So what are some of the best plants, you know, that you can, some of the least toxic plants? Well, ripe and uh, sweet fruits. Think berries, melons, apples, etc. Because if you think about it, the fruit is the part of the plant that the plant wants you to eat. So you, you know, poop out those seeds if you're an animal or don't have a toilet and make another apple tree, let's say, grow. And so again, sweet fruits are the least, some of the least toxic plants. Another good category of plants is peeled and de-seeded cucumbers and squashes. Again, you re remove the, the peel or the skin because that packs a lot of the anti-nutrients. You remove the seeds of those plants because they're also heavily protected and then they are fairly safe to eat. Avocados are also not only packed with a lot of good fats but with virtually zero toxins or maybe even olives. They're also very low in anti-nutrients. On the other hand of the spectrum, what are some of the most toxic plants? And I don't necessarily mean the ones where you eat them and you die, like certain you know types of beans. If you eat them raw or even a potato, if you eat a potato raw, you're in really serious trouble. But what are some of those plants that you you likely eat on a more regular basis kale you know called a superfood it's anything but it's packed with goitrogens and oxalates two of those antinutrients that you cannot mitigate or remove spinach next one leafy greens in general most dark leafy greens are the most protected plants 
on this planet that you absolutely want to avoid consuming. And so next time you think about having a green smoothie with raw spinach and raw kale, think twice because you're literally consuming a chemical cocktail of oxalates and goitrogens. Potato skins, it's another thing that you absolutely should avoid because it contains a natural pesticide called glycoalkaloids. If you think about it, you know, any tuber, the skin is really what protects the tube from its environment, you know, from insects, from the soil. And so that skin is heavily protected with those chemicals. And so I always recommend peeling potatoes. There is no reason to eat a potato with a peel. Better yet, if you enjoy potatoes, ferment them. You know, we ferment sweet potatoes. That reduces the glycemic index. That removes a lot of, removes a lot of the toxins. And obviously, you know, we, we peel the potato before. Raw broccoli and cauliflower uh, leaves, in particular the leaves, are very high in goitrogen, something that you want to avoid. So yes, you can make some plant food safe, but it takes time and the right methods. You know, your work with plants starts once you have harvested or purchased a plant. With animals, it's the exact opposite. Once the animal is down, good to eat. With plants, it's the exact opposite. So here is what I recommend you. You know, make animal foods your foundation. Grass-fed meats, wild fish, and yes, organ meats, of course. If you don't like the taste of organs, you know, look at something like MK supplements, just gelatin capsules, don't taste like anything, don't smell like anything, and you get all of the benefits of fresh organ meats without the taste or the hassle. If you do eat plants, focus on the safest ones, you know, ripe fruits, peeled cucumbers and squashes, avocados, olives, then soak, sprout, ferment and cook. Learn how to prepare that stuff so you can reduce their toxic load as much as possible. And then it depends on the individual, on your health, on your sensitivities, on your individual circumstances that determine how much of a given plant you can get away with without suffering the consequences either immediately, like bloating, stomach issues or all over time, like kidney stones and some of the other inflammatory conditions that you get by overconsuming many of those anti-nutrients. And remember, some toxins like oxalates and goitrogens can't be fully removed, if at all, so use them very sparingly. And last but not least, embrace your omnivore heritage. Humans are meat-leaning omnivores. You know, meat for your main calories, plants for flavor and variety. Did anything you heard today make you rethink your diet? If so, what will you change first? You know, drop your thoughts below. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the Primal Chief Podcast for more ancestral science and modern hacks. Until next time, stay primal.